Hello everybody and welcome to another Starbound basic wiring tutorial. This one's updated to the latest version of Beat Giraffe and hopefully I'll be able to explain things a bit better than last time. To start off, I'll show you how to unlock the uh, wiring station. First you're going to want to go to Strange Gate and you'll find a portal. And this will take you to an outpost that has a bunch of NPCs they'll have a bunch of quests for you to do and as you do more and more will unlock and you'll get missions um, so here's all the NPCs they'll have exclamation points above their heads and you'll want to do all of their quests and once you've done all of their quests you go to the far right side and this guy will sell you a license to upgrade your ship and upon getting that license you can head back and talk to your AI and then it'll tell you what materials you need and you can upgrade your ship to a bigger ship and then more quests will unlock and more missions will unlock and that's how you progress through the game pretty much so we're gonna head back now and we'll start explaining the basics of wiring so after your first unlock you'll get this section of the ship it'll be a bit shorter but then um, you can unlock the wiring tool from your AI, and once you do that, you'll be able to craft the wiring station at a robotic crafting table. And the various things you can make are pretty straightforward. Um, just hover over it to see what you need to make it. I'm not going to go into that too much, but we'll begin by showing how to wire. So you press T, and you'll grab your wiring tool. Um, if there's already a connection, you press R, where you right click to cancel the connection and then to make a new one you left click on one red and connect that to a blue or you can start from a blue and connect it to a red reds are outputs meaning that a signal will leave um, whatever device it's attached to and inputs will receive that signal and turn on or off based on what they receive as you can see all of these are wired up um, two things we got are a big wall button and a small wall button they do the same thing and older versions these four buttons you used to press but now you can walk over them and they'll activate and along with the floor sensor that was always there you step on it a new addition is this wall sensor um, you may have seen them in the outpost they're connected to all the doors I like to use floor sensor still uh, next we have a wall switch Whenever you flip it, it'll stay flipped, unlike the buttons where whenever you press it, it'll eventually turn itself off. And if you connect a button to the input on the wall switch, then whenever you press it, it will toggle between whatever it was to whatever to the new one. And you press it again, toggle it back. Um, and then we have a new smaller wall switch. It's different in that you can't do the input thing, so it's only used as a toggle manual. Um, another thing you can do is here we have the pressure plates hooked up to the door so whenever I step on it the door will open and also I have there's an input or an output from the door I have that hooked up to the light so that whenever the door is open the light will turn on so you don't have to connect um, these devices to everything you can connect doors and hatches to other things also but there's just a little thing you can do Alright, here we have the various gates. Um, this is no gate, it's just a simple turn it on, it'll turn on. Here we have an AND gate. Uh, AND gate requires both to be on in order for it to send the signal out. So right now they're both off, no signal. One's on, still no signal. And now they're both on. So we finally get the signal being sent out. And if once you turn one off, it goes off. Simple as that. Okay, this is an OR gate. Um, it's pretty useless actually because inputs by default are like OR gates and what that means is that as long as they're receiving at least one signal they'll be on. But these can be useful to act as relays to like if you're working on a really big project and it's spanning across a really large area then instead of having to walk back and forth you can just walk um, you can send an output over there once and use these and then continue from there so you don't have to walk all over the place. 
and I'll cover that in a future tutorial because it'll actually be useful. But they work so as long as any of these are on, then it'll be on. And if multiple ones are on, it'll still be on. So that's simple. Um, this is an XOR gate. Uh, how it works is the two inputs have to be um, in different states. So one has to be on and one has to be off. They can't both be on, they can't both be off. And I'll demonstrate it now. So there are different positions and it's on, same position off, different positions on, and so on. Alright, up here, uh, this little triangle here is the NOT gate. It'll take the opposite of whatever input it's receiving. So even though this is off right now, it's still sending a signal out. Um, here we have the NOT gate attached to an AND gate. So the AND gate required them both to be on in order for it to work. So this one requires them to not be on. In other words, um, as long, well, I mean, that's pretty much it. As long as they're both not on, then this will be on. And at this point, they're both on, so it's no longer on. Um, it's useful for certain scenarios. Um, now, this is a not OR gate, so a NOR gate. And it requires um, none of them to be on in order for it to work, which is much more useful than the normal OR gate. But still, you don't need the OR gate, because all you have to do, all you can do is just hook all the outputs up into the NOT input, and it'll achieve the exact same effect. So the OR gate is still completely useless. But anyway, here's a demonstration. If any of them are on, then it'll be off. They have to both be off in order for it to be on. So the, it's a, the exact opposite of the end gate. They have to both be off in order for it to be on. Um, here we have a uh, NOT gate attached to the XOR gate. Um, so on this one, they have to both be on the same state in order for it to be on. If they're in different states, it'll be off. Same state on, different states off. Okay, and up here we have a light sensor in the back corner here. Um, the bottom output is for dim lights. So if it's below a certain threshold, this one will be on. As long, above dark, but below a certain threshold, this will be on. And then if it's above the threshold, this top one will trigger, which is the bright um, sensor. And as I get closer, I got a little light back on here. You see it turns yellow. That means it's getting at least dim light. And then if I get close enough, it'll turn green for bright light. And how we have it hooked up over here is the bottom one is attached to a NOT gate. But, so what this means is it'll be on as long as it's dark. But if it's not dark, it'll turn off. No matter how bright it gets, it'll still be off. Then we got the dim sensor, so whenever it's dim, it'll turn on. And then bright attached to a NOT gate. So as long as it's not bright, so below the threshold, this will always be on. No matter how dark it gets. And then, of course, the bright one. Whenever it gets bright enough, it'll turn on. And something to note is that um, without a light pack, your characters still generate a tiny bit of light. So if you move close enough to a light sensor, it'll still get a dim light, which is weird. Okay, so that's all of that. Okay, right. here we have um, a timer. It's on a half second. It's the only one you can get. So every half second, it'll blink, it'll turn on, then it'll turn off, turn on, turn off. Um, it has an input, which whenever you trigger it, it'll be locked to whatever it's currently at. And then whenever it loses the signal, it'll start toggling again. And you can even lock it to being off. Here we have a latch. Latches are kind of complicated. Um, the top input is sort of like an allowance like if the top input is on then you can start toggling it but if it's off then you can't change it from whatever it is so and the bottom input will toggle it to whatever color it's receiving or um, signal it's receiving so right now it's not doing anything but if I turn the top one on then it'll start copying the color of the button so when the button's on it'll be on when the button's off it'll be off and if it loses the top signal midway, it'll still stick to whatever it last was. But then whenever it receives um, 
a top signal again, it'll change to whatever its bottom input is. So it's kind of complicated. It's useful though, and I'll show it off in a little um, tutorial in the future. Here we have a new one. It is a persistent um, switch. The top one, if the top one receives an input, it'll turn on. If the bottom one receives an input, it'll turn off. Um, so it's kind of like a switch, except even if you toggle it on multiple times, it won't switch until you toggle it off through the bottom one. And the same thing, if you toggle it off multiple times, it still won't change until you toggle it on. So it's kind of like a better switch, um, which I'll be using in a future tutorial. And some things I didn't cover in the previous one, there's a little drain here on the ground. Um, wherever it's off, it's closed, and wherever it's on, it's open. And all it does is it just, like, completely sucks up all water and just makes it disappear into oblivion. It's kind of dumb that you can't recycle that, but... And I think it's not just water, it should be any liquid. But it's got to close. And here we have a water sensor, it's a new one. So whenever there's a liquid within that square, it'll toggle on, being like, hey, there's water here. Um, so here's a little demonstration. I got a bunch of water here. A door, whenever I open it, the water will come flooding in. Uh, so let's show that off. Alright, now let's close the door. So now we're in a chamber full of water, but thanks to the tech upgrades, we can survive without breathing. Um, if I flip this switch, um, the gate will open up and drain all the water. Um, also, something to note is I got a little setup here. Okay, so this button would normally open the door, but I have it set up so that since there's water in here, this sensor is activated, and whenever it's activated, I want it to send um, a reverse signal out. So basically, it's saying there's water in here, so you don't want to open it. So that's why you need a not gate. So there's water in here, you don't want to open it, so you have an AND gate here that has both um, the water's not signal and the button so that you can't open this door unless both of these things are are what you want them to be. Uh, it's kinda hard to explain. So basically we want there to not be water and we want this button to be pressed. Okay, that's like the best way to explain it. So not water, um, yes on the press. And those are connected to an AND gate. And we'll go ahead and drain it. Alright, and see, there's a knot on the water now. And I press it, and they're both activated, so the AND gate triggers the door, and it opens. So that's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> I feel bad about it. But, yeah. Well, that's pretty much the basics. Um, I'll make a new tutorial for... Um, a password door. It'll be a bit, be a bit better than the previous one due to the new, um, due to this, this new uh, mall switch. It'll be uh, way better. Uh, that'll be an entirely new video, so look forward to that, or, you know, not, whatever. So I'll see you in the next one. Uh, bye.